Hello everyone and this is Crystal from Open to Public HVAC School. Today we're going to cover what happens if the label from your motor is rubbed off and you have no idea what your RPM is on the motor, which is extremely important. So I'm going to show you how to calculate what the RPM of your motor is if you can't read it. First things first, if your motor is ruined, obviously you're not going to have to worry about pulling this apart if you need to. You might not need to, but most motors are not going to be able to accurately count the poles. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to count the poles on our motor to calculate what the RPM could be. Now, horsepower gets a little more difficult, but for now what we're going to cover is the RPM. We're going to remove the bolts on the end of the motor and we'll get to the part we need to get to inside here so we can count them. So here are our windings, our poles, and each one of these bindings here are a pole. So what we're doing is we're counting each one of these bundles, these loops, to get the poles and calculate our RPM. So we're going to go in here and we're going to count from loop to loop, how many we have. So here we have our one, two, three, four, five, and finally six. So we know this is a six pole motor based off of our wired bundles here on our windings. So when we're calculating this, we're going to take these poles, and this is on an AC voltage motor. DC is going to be different. So on an AC motor, we're going to divide the number of poles by 7200. And so obviously we're going to do our math here and add our zeros. And now we know, <laughs> so used to doing that. Okay, and now we know it's 1200 RPM. Now this is on a no load, which means this is the RPM before we add all of our additional pressure and weight to it, our blower wheel, our fan blade, and then of course there is motor slip. Even though it's a 1200 RPM motor, this is why often on the labels of motors you will see a 1075 RPM there. And that's going to be on a motor that has the load on it already. So instead of the capability of the 1200 RPM, we're actually going to be getting somewhere between 1050 and 1100 because of that load. So it's very important that we do get the RPM correct based off of this method of counting poles. If you replace a motor that has a lower RPM, such as an 825 or 900 RPM motor, that is going to shorten the life of that motor. And not to mention that fan blade 
the blower wheel, all of that is designed to go with a 1200 RPM motor. So that could also cause more issues within your air handler, your furnace, or your condenser outside. Just a fun fact, uh, the relationship between these poles and the RPM, which of course stands for rotations per minute, it has to do with the magnetic field, which is produced in the stator poles. So this field here leads to the creation of magnetic fields in the rotor that actually relate to the frequency of the field in the stator. So when we say slip, what we're accounting for in that RPM is the difference between the stator's synchronous speed and the actual operating speed. Essentially, it's trying to keep up. Um, the rotor is always trying to keep up, so it's going to be running slightly slower than the unloaded RPM. And when that happens, this is what is actually creating the torque uh, needed to getting the motor going. And now, as we mentioned, this is for uh, AC motors. DC motors do have poles, but the uh, poles actually don't affect speed like they do with the AC motors. There's a lot of other factors that actually impact the speed on DC motors, which can be the operating voltage or the strength of the magnets, and also uh, the number of wires that uh, turns the armature, uh, or what the armature has, rather. So DC motors can only perform at the speeds that are rated for the amount of voltage that's going to it. So there's a little bit more uh, math and other factors, uh, other variables, if you will, to calculating RPM on DC motors. Now, if you are unsure of horsepower on motors, that is going to be quite a bit different and a lot more is going to be entailed um, with calculating that, you're going to have your torque, speed, RPM, and you, you do need to know the RPM before calculating all of that. So it definitely is more difficult to actually calculate the horsepower of a motor. If you're unsure of that, it's really best to get the model number off the unit so that you're able to get a parts list. And with any of this, it's better to have a model number. But in some rare cases, there are some extremely old units where uh, the motors are too rubbed off and some of the information is missing, in which case you can make educated guesses, but I would advise against it because you never know what that could have been running off of before. Uh, this is just to give you information on how to check it if you're missing the info on the RPM on the motor, and that's all you need to know. So hopefully this has been helpful for all of you, and uh, check back later. We're taking a poll right now. Uh, it's on our community section for our next video. Thanks so much for joining us, guys, and have a wonderful day.